look to put. I try to be as practical as I can. I forgot to tell you this lecture will be in Chinese. So you agree? So okay. Do you agree? Yes. Agree? You don't know Chinese. Agree to say? Nobody? So can we learn Chinese? Is it possible? Okay, so this is objectives. This is history. This is the alphabet. And this is a blue protocol and how and where. So if I interpret for you, it will be easier, isn't it? So can we proceed in Chinese in this way? Yes. This is what I mean when we are discussing ultrasound in Planck for ages. Ultrasound was not for lung by sonographers. They cannot assess anything in the lung because what we know from the ultrasound, it hits air and bone. And what's in the lung is just air. This is the normal lung. I'm not checking normal lung. So, it was a true fact till here, I cannot give you anatomy like that. This is the liver, this is the kidney. I can see only shadow, which I don't know what is this shadow. So this is a Chinese alphabet. And this young man, Daniel Lippenstein, the hero of ultrasound lung, he changed the view. He said, we can use ultrasound in lung assessment. He's a new scope, he's an intensivist, he's head of department in France, in Paris, and he did a lot of efforts. He published like 500 plus cases of complex ICU scenarios, and he was able to diagnose more than 90% of the cases using just ultrasound one. He got more than 90% sensitive and specific results. He diagnosed 83% it's already 83 patients of congestive heart failure, 49 patients of COPD, 64 patients of pneumonias, 21 of pulmonary embolism, and 8 or 9 cases of pneumothorax. Isn't it marvelous? Provided, so thanks, Daniel. We need to know the alphabet, and this is the most difficult part of the ultrasound model. So we spend some time to teach you the alphabet of ultrasound lung before we proceed to the blue book. Bad sign, A lines, B lines, lung sliding, seashore, stratosphere or barcode, lung pulse, lung point, shred sign, hepatization, air bronchogram, consolidation, curtain sign, lapse. All these are new signs for all of us, almost all of us. We'll discuss each one of detail and please don't allow me to proceed for the next until you digest it very well. Deal? Mm -hmm. Deal. Take a deep breath. Bad signs. This is, can you see? <laughs> is there any way to cover this area? That's really important. Can we? <laughs> Discuss the theory. Theory. Okay. That's it. But bad sign. This is the bat with a head and two wings. When I put my ultrasound probe on the ribs, I will see the same picture or almost same picture of the bat. This is head with two wings. Head and two wings. Is it the same? Feel it. Difficult head and two wings. The wings is the black area under the rib because bone hates ultrasound. And here this is the rib and this is the rib. And in between is a lung tissue with air inside. So this is bad sign.
postavil. Marks I'm starting with. This you will see in each patient. If you don't find it, just try to mobilize your fork up and down till you get two ribs and lung tissue in between. Okay, this is the starting point. And we will do that in practice hand. A line. A line is just the mirror image of the pleura. When your probe sends ultrasound waves or echo waves that travels in distance through the lung tissue. What is echo? What's echo in Arabic? Do you remember in the past when my baby lay with the echo? Muhammad! Muhammad, 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 Muhammad. This is the echo. So when I'm sending my sound waves, it comes to me back in a repeated fashion. And this is what happens here. So, this is just a mirror image of the pleura in different distance, another reflection of the pleura. And after more distance, there is another reflection. So this is more faint than this and this. So the more you go, the less the more you go with the distance the less quality of image you get, but it is in the same distances or almost the same distance. If you measure this one, we find it the same here, the same here, okay? So if I find this picture, this is A lines. It is just the mirror image of the plural. Clear? If you find this sign, just before you go, okay? This is an indicator of normal lung tissue, okay? There's no, no problem with this lung, okay? Why is this mirror image appear only in the, in the, if we do a Because the only tissue contains air. Yeah. Because the, the lung is the only tissue that contains air. Yeah. That's it. Echo spread in air or in no air. But if you try to do echo in the water, it will be more difficult. Isn't it? Try to send some sound waves. It will, become more faint, you cannot observe it in the water compared to the echo spreading in the space. This is what I believe. B lines, it is the same idea, but when you put water on this mirror, it will come like a zigzag picture. It's a different one. Okay? So this kind of blurred image is B lines. The B lines starts again from the plural and it is ranging from one to seven or more. I'm expecting the normal one or two. If it's three or more, this is abnormal. What is the B line? It's the ultrasound waves passing in the interalveolar septi, which contains some fluids, even normally. As interstitium, we have some fluids, isn't it? So Reflection of ultrasound beam or ultrasound waves in the septa, intraalveolar septa, is different from the air that makes these B lines. It starts from the pleura till the end of your ultrasound sector. Normal one to two lines, if more than this, it's diagnostic of fluid in the interstitium. What does fluid in the interstitium mean? Edema, ARDS, 
interstitial lung disease, whatever, pneumonia. So this is one of the challenging signs because you need to know this basic path of physiology and sonoanatomy. The normal is no B lines or one or two. If it's more than this, there's a B profile. B profile, if it is exactly this one, that is indicative of pulmonary edema most of the time. If it is homogeneous and same image bilaterally. So bilateral, B lines and just B lines, this is diagnosed as pulmonary edema. It is a very sensitive sign of pulmonary artery pressure less than 15 if it is not there. So, give fluids or don't give fluids, IVC is less than 50% collapsibility, go to that lung. If you have B lines, you will be a bit suspicious to give or not to give even with diameter and indices in that IBC says to give. I'll be a bit cautious before I give. But if I don't find these B lines, I'll be more brave to give fluid because it's 90% sensitive and specific for alveolar, sorry, interstitial edema. Interstitial edema is a stage before alveolar edema. Okay, so it's a sensitive sign. Pulmonary artery occlusion pressure less than 18. This means there's no pulmonary edema. Okay, there's no cardiogenic pulmonary edema. If you have no B lines, okay. If you have B lines, that means that means there is interstitial edema or interstitial fluid, which could be cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic. So it's for differential diagnosis and more or further work. Happy with A lines and B lines? Lung sliding. We see that one today. See there is shimmering or some sort of movement here. Can you see that? Is it clear? So static skin, subcutaneous tissue, two ribs, and I'm zooming in between the two ribs intercostal muscles, parietal pleura. Visceral pleura. I cannot discriminate between parietal and visceral pleura by ultrasound. I can just see the sliding, the movement between them. Okay? So if there is no sliding, that means there is a problem between parietal and visceral pleura, and take that part cautiously. It does not mean pneumothorax. We we'll come to this one. Yeah. So if there is no sliding, it could be pneumothorax? Yes. To get ellipses? Yes, because there is no sliding. Athletes. Could be pneumonia, COPD, could be apneic patient, could be right main stem bronchus and you are scanning the left. That means there is no inflation or proper inflation of this lung. What's the underlying reason for that? We'll further investigate. But if there is lung sliding 100%, there is no pneumothorax in this spot. I take that question. In this spot. If you have insisted pneumothorax and you go down and you scan, there is a sliding here and no sliding here, so this area is pneumothorax, or mostly, or I will go in the differential diagnosis, but this area is free of pneumothorax. That's why we start scanning from the lung abysses, because air tend to go up. So this is the most specific point, then I will go down more. Okay? Happy? Seashore sign, Dr. Muhammad mentioned it in EFAST yesterday. Seashore, the sky, the sea waves, then cut off, then sandy beach. Here's the sky, the blue, sorry, the, the, the sea waves, and then cut off, and then sandy beach. Convince it, looks like. Okay, he is just trying to give you the alphabet in the most easy way. Okay? And this seashore sign means there is static area, which is this one, which is the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscles, which are not mobile under ultrasound waves. Then a different field, which is mobile pleura, sliding pleura. This is the normal picture I can see in a normal lung. 
But this one, when you get the barcode sign, or all became lions, lions, lions. This is possible pneumophorus. Or what I know from this barcode sign, that the lung is not moving in the right way. Maybe vision is apneic or whatever from the lung. We call it barcode sign or stratosphere sign. Lung pulse, another indicator of normal lung. Lung pulse means cardiac pulsations are transmitted through the lung tissue. If you find this sign, this is another indicator of normal lung because if there is air in the pleura, cardiac pulsation will not be transmitted to the ultrasound probe. Okay? So this is another sign of absence of normal lungs. This is lung pulse. There's lung pulse and lung point. Totally different expressions. Lung point, this is two CTs. There is a transition zone between the pneumothorax and no air here. If I put my ultrasound probe here, in this zone, or in this zone, I find that part of my probe is covering normal lung tissue, which is showing sliding, and the other part of the probe is showing no sliding. If you pick this point which is really expert or expertise skill, you can say there is pneumothorax 100% exposure. This is diagnostic in 100%. But it's a difficult one. You cannot easily get it. Okay? So again, I'm putting my probe here. You can see here there is a bit of sliding motion here and static part here. Is it obvious? See, this is the static. And if you do M mode in this part, will give you barcode sign, and in this part, will give you seashore sign. Okay? This is barcode sign and this is sandy beach. Barcode sign and sandy beach. See the difference? If you find the anterior half is the same as posterior half, this is the barcode sign. Okay? So seashore and this is one point. Shredded plural. Plural shred means inflamed plural thick with this is not the typical picture of the pleura we'll see in the hands on because it's diseased pleura, inflamed pleura with subpleural consolidations with some B lines so some B lines may indicate pneumonia if you find that with thick pleura it's not pulmonary edema is an indication of infection or pneumonia we call this one B prime profile or C profile so B prime because it's not typical B lines with a healthy pleura, or C because it's consolidation or indicator of pneumonia. So hepatization, consolidation, dynamic air bronchogram, another term is used for pneumonia. C, this is the lung tissue, is the same, almost the same as the liver and this diaphragm in between. And if you see these threads, if it is dynamic, that means there is active pneumonia. If it's a static air bronchogram, it may be atelectasis. It's one of the main differences. So this one I can say atelectasis, this one we may say pneumonia. But take it cautiously. Again, again. Okay. If you find the lung tissue become like liver or spleen tissue, there's no air anymore in the lung, you shouldn't see this one in the normal picture, in the normal videos, okay? Because air prevents ultrasound from going here. If it's tissue-like, that means sedation or collapse or atelectasis. There's abnormal pathology. How to differentiate or discriminate between them, between both of them? If I find these traits and there is mobility in these traits, we call it dynamic 
air bronchogram. Dynamic air bronchogram is indicated of pneumonia. Okay? Happy? Curtain sign. This is the liver, and when the patient takes inspiration, some B lines are coming and covering this area. Curtain sign, usually normal. But if underneath you find some effusion or lapse, that's not normal. So the curtain sign, it, sign itself alone is indicator of normal lung. But in this one, there's multiple B lines, so this patient may have some edema or pneumonia. Okay, another thick pleura with some pleural consolidation. <coughs> if this one is in the postprolateral point of the lung, we call that plaps. What is plaps? Postprolateral or posterior lateral, alveolar or pleural syndrome. So alveolar because sometimes thick pleura, shredded pleura with sub pleural consolidation, so it's an alveolar consolidation. So plaps. This plaps is one of the most important points in my blue group. Okay? Before we proceed, are you happy with the alphabet? A line, B line, barcode, stratosphere. Happy? Seashore sign, plural shreds, lung sliding, lung point, lung pulse. Happy? All these terms are clear in our minds, crystal clear. We cannot proceed without these ones. It's difficult, needs practice, needs to see more than one once. Huh? It laps, perfect. Laps, it's postrolateral, it's related to the site of application of your probe. Let's we'll see that in a minute. And it's alveolar plus minus pleural syndrome. So this is alveolar and this is pleural. Thicken the pleural with underlying consolidation. This is the diagnostic of chest infection or pneumonia or whatever. There's inflammatory process behind. Okay. This is an X-ray for ICU patient. What's your impression for a snap? There's, there's no irrigation here because of what? Yeah, maybe collapse in pneumonia. Maybe something else, like what? What do you think? Give me one of the differential diagnoses. Pneumonia? Can you pulmonary edema? Do you feel happy to diagnose this X-ray? Or you feel, I'm not happy to give you a, a full diagnosis? Could be a differential diagnosis. That's why we say ultrasound is more sensitive and specific than the X-ray. Let's see. If I see this picture in the ultrasound, this is the liver and the FM, and you see this picture. If I see thick pleura with plaques, and this area of air on the gram, I can say it's pneumonia. Okay. But if it's changing to this one, there is jet black color fluid here with a mixed underneath, so this is an effusion. Okay? And if you see this one, this is an effusion with collapse with an air bronchogram or dynamic air bronchogram. This is pneumonia with effusion and atelectasis. Do you feel happy to say that on the ultrasound? So, yes, we get more sensitive and specific signs. So this is again, this is air bronchogram. If it's mobile versus static, it makes a bit of change or difference. This is a 
static air program and this is dynamic one case for the region, but this is still Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to start the blue protocol? Who knows this one? The blue protocol, what's the meaning of blue? Any cyanotic or hypoxic patient will apply the blue protocol, so it is a bedside lung ultrasonography in emergency patient, provided they are hypoxic. Okay? Five diseases I can diagnose with the blue protocol pneumonia, pneumothorax, pulmonary edema, uh, asthma, and pulmonary embolism. You can go through all these diseases and diagnose it. As I said, Daniel Lippenstein diagnosed it with 90% accurate results. What are the steps? Check for line, lung sliding, A lines and B lines, lung point. If you have A profile, B profile, or C profile, what's the difference? between A, B, and C profiles. Anybody remember that? What is C profile? Okay. So it is a modified B lines, okay, with shredded pleural. So it is an indicator of pneumonia. Pleural effusion is very easy to be diagnosed. If you have a DVT in your patient and A lines, so your lung tissue is healthy, your saturation is 80%, you have a DVT, it's a PE. Simple as such. Okay? So we have seven profiles in our blue protocol. Where to put my probe? There's three points. Two in front here. We call it the blue points. The first one in the mid-clavicular, second to third in the postal space. We usually do this one with either linear probe or phased array probe, but you still can do it with curvilinear linear abdominal probe. Okay? This is the first blue point. Second blue point, as you see, is putting both hands like that. The first one is in the middle or between his ring and middle fingers. And then second point is almost near to the middle and it's in the anterior axillary line. First and second blue points. Then here this is the claps point, posterior lateral point, and in this one, usually we use curvilinear to face the array probe because we need more tissue penetration, okay? Plus, complete the puzzle with different probes in different areas in the heart, in the EFAS, whatever, okay? You can do also an ultrasound diaphragm to get some clues. This is the protocol where it's hint more minutes in this page. We'll go slowly and step by step. Okay? I'm sure by the end of this lecture you'll be a bit confused. It takes a lot of effort. It's not easy. It's a matter of practice. So the cornerstone in the management or the key point is the lung sliding. So put your probe, check for lung sliding, present absent or I don't know. So if it is present, I go this way. If it's absent, I go this way. If I don't know, and sometimes I really cannot swear because there's a plural trait, I cannot swear if there is sliding or not. If I'm confused and there is A, B, or C profile, shredded plural, B lines down to the sector, but it's B dash profile, I can diagnose in one. Okay? But this is again back to assess lung sliding. If you can see good lung sliding, lung sliding is there. So I go to the next step, which is either A profile or B profile. If it's B profile, which is multiple B lines, more than three, and just B lines, homogeneous B lines, bilaterally the same, this is indicator of pulmonary edema. Homogeneous, bilateral, nothing more. This is just pulmonary edema. If there is any extra finding in the back, so it is a change in the diagnosis. So pulmonary edema is B lines with positive lung sliding and this is the only findings you have. Okay, anybody disagree with that? So I have lung sliding and A lines. 
with no B line, so it is not pulmonary anemia with C profile or B prime profile. Yes. That means that means you have no problem with the lung tissue. But the patient. Blue protocol we applied for hypoxic patient, not for a normal patient. So I have an 80% saturation which needs an explanation. If you reach with normal A lines bilaterally. The lung tissue is mostly normal. You have to find the diagnosis. DVT mapping, there is deep vein thrombosis. You diagnose the PE. Yes. What to do next? Yes. That's it. Yes. Go and assess RV, dilation, tricuspid regurgitation, pulmonary artery pressure, give your management, hypermanization or thrombolysis, and reassess. If the RV dilation is improving, the pulmonary artery pressure is improving. Back to the pulmonary edema, you diagnose the B profile. What to do next? What is that for? What is the cause? So, is it cardiomyopathy? Poor left ventricular ejection fraction? New regional wall motion abnormality? Severe mitral regurgitation? What is the underlying cause? So, always after you finish the blood protocol, if you find a diagnosis, go and assess to complete the puzzle, okay? So till this point is clear. Now, there is no sliding. You cannot see the sliding, you can swear there is no lung sliding. But just B lines, so we cannot call it actually B lines. To get the proper B lines, there should be lung sliding. So it's called B prime profile, and this is another indicator of pneumonia. So I can diagnose pneumonia with three ways. Okay, pneumonia is a difficult diagnosis with an ultrasound. But if you have no lung sliding and you have A lines, is this one from this one? A lines without lung sliding, so it's not A profile. So there is A line and A profile. A profile and B profile means there is lung sliding. If you have the A lines but no sliding, it's A lines, okay, or B prime profile. Clear this point? So A lines in absence of lung sliding means mostly, or there is a possibility to be accurate, of pneumothorax. How to get that? Lung pump. If you find the transition zone between stratosphere and seashore, the barcode and seashore, if you find this point, this is 100% pneumothorax since the access. Provided you find the lung pump, you will spend some time doing that because you don't know where is the area of transition. Okay, so we go first blue point, second blue point, plus three areas. Plus, if you need more, you can go to diaphragm. If it's a weaning failure, we'll teach that also. Okay, if you diagnose pulmonary edema, we say we diagnose underlying cause by echo. I advise you, in this time, go to the mitral inflow and measure the EA ratio. You will find something good. Correlate that one. See pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. If it is more than 18 or less than 18 as per EA ratio. And today, I promise, if we have the time, we'll do the tissue doppler to do EE prime. EE prime, E is the mitral inflow before atrial contraction. A is the atrial contraction. E, E prime, A prime is the tissue doppler mirror image of this one. But it's more accurate, it's more real one. Because the problem with EA ratio, there is a pseudonormal, which I cannot discriminate between normal and pseudonormal. Normal is normal. So the normal is grade to the aspirate dysfunction. If you shift to the tissue doppler, it will give you the real picture. If you find very small E, that's stage or grade to the aspirate dysfunction. We see that in our eyes. Okay? Happy with the protocol? You want to go through?
14. So we'll hold this one for a while. A to 5. A to 5 means what? Yes, there is one slide. Okay. Okay. A lines. A lines indicates what? It's full deviation. Perfect. That means what? Means What's your next step? Next step will be a minus Okay, so if it's DVD positive to a snap, it's the diagnosis is pulmonary embolism. Okay? If there is no DVT signs, so A profile and no DVT. COPD or asthma, perfect. Okay, so B profile means what? Volunteers. B profile. Lung sliding is present. With B line, this means what? Homogeneous, bilateral, no added pictures. This is pulmonary edema. What you will do next? Okay, go to diagnose with the echo. What's the cause of this one? Cardiomyopathy, bad lesion, what's the problem? Okay, and mitral inflow, EDA ratio, or EE primary special doctor. We'll do that today. Okay, so what is B prime profile? Oh, sorry, man. B prime profile. Absent sliding. Okay, with B profile. Or with B line, sorry, not B profile. With B line, so it's B prime profile. What does this mean? Pneumonia. A, B, or C profile. A, B, C means A in some areas and B in certain areas. In the same lung or different lungs. That means pneumonia. So, pulmonary edema is homogeneous B lines bilateral. If you pick these areas, there's B lines and A lines, B lines and A lines, this batchy distribution means batchy process. Pulmonary edema is never batchy because the process is in the heart. It can the heart be batchy, isn't it? So A, B, or C, it's A plus B in different areas. We call it C because it's consolidation. So this is indicator of pneumonia. Okay. There is no sliding. There is no lung sliding. And there is A lines. How do you diagnose it? Lung point. So if I get the lung point with an A profile, or A lines, not A profile, A lines, so it is a diagnostic of pneumococcus. Clear? I have your last look for now. Anybody wants me to repeat this one? It's a matter of practice, believe me. In hands-on, you will just see normal A lines, some positive B lines, and lung sliding plus seizure sign. Okay? And we'll do the diaphragm ultrasound to, to see the diaphragmatic excursion. It's the maximum you can see in the hands-on. Those ones you will see in the ICU once you start to practice. I promise you, each patient you will touch in mechanically ventilated patients you will find one of these. Pneumonia, epilepsis, Diffusions, there's always a finding in the blaps. Or almost always there's a finding. There's new protocols coming to recruit the patients under, under, under ultrasound guidance, which is really marvelous. They see the variation in the apical lung zones and in the basal lung zones, and they guide the recruitment by these ones. And then after the recruitment, they check for the pneumothorax. So it's respiratory thirst are using the ultrasound in your protocols. They are scanning electric lung zones in the back and they start doing chest physiotherapy and then scanning after and documenting their therapy, how effective it was, how the picture improved. So it's better than again shooting in the dark. Convince it? Any questions? Any questions in the whole course, either for me or for Shepard?